Hi, I'm Kara Musgrave, owner and operator at Musgrave Equestrian. At Musgrave Equestrian, we use reward-based training to create joy in movement. We have a special emphasis on helping horses with long-term movement issues, like neurological issues or other poor movement patterns. We also do a lot to help horses who are coming back into ridden work, whether they've been off from an injury or just had a little vacation, or even those who are being ridden for the first time. I developed Musgrave Equestrian along with my physical therapist husband. We work together to use what we currently know about equine biomechanics, as well as information and research from the human physical therapy world to help horses move better, feel better, and enjoy their jobs all over the world. Now that you've learned about Musgrave Equestrian, let's talk a little bit about positive reinforcement basics. So positive reinforcement, also called clicker training or reward-based training, is just one quadrant of the operant conditioning um, animal learning quadrant. So quadrant means four, there's four different quadrants of learning. Most riding and most horsemanship is done with what we call negative reinforcement, which doesn't refer to negative as in bad, but it refers to negative as in subtract. So when we squeeze our horse with our legs, we are adding pressure, and then when they walk forward off that pressure, we subtract the pressure. And so they are being reinforced because we have taken away the pressure. With positive reinforcement, we are adding something, typically a food reward, um, when they do what we ask, and that's going to reinforce that behavior. So the clicker comes in because we pair the clicker with the food reward, the noise marks the very moment they do the thing that we ask, so it gives us time to deliver the food reward. And because the clicker is so precise, once your animal learns that the click means, yes, that's what I wanted you to do, they're going to become really motivated to work for that click. So we can get really highly motivated learners, and that's why you see a lot of clicker training being used in trick training and a lot of different things like that. So when I first start clicker training, you have to load the clicker, and I'll show you this also um, with what I call a target stick, but basically I click, and Wells actually isn't used to the clicker because I use a tongue click with him. So you just make the noise, deliver a treat, and like I said, when you do this, you can teach your horse how you want them to receive the food. So I have a treat pouch, I never feed my horse directly from my treat pouch. They only get a treat after a click, and with my arm extended, I keep my palm down, and I wait till he's being gentle, and then I'll turn my hand over flat and give him the food. And this teaches them to have really good food manners. He's still kind of figuring stuff out because I've only had him a little bit, but once they learn that they'll never get food from you until they have earned it with a click, um, they'll become a lot less grabby. I know a lot of us are afraid of those um, horses that are really treat sour. Um, and this is one way to really help that. It takes away a lot of the anxiety because they know when to expect it. So some other um, misconceptions about Treat training and clicker training is that you have to be all or nothing. And though you can be all or nothing, you absolutely don't have to be. Horses learn to understand context really well. So if I'm clicker training, I have my treat pouch on and I have specific tools that are specific to what I'm doing. Um, and so when I'm not wearing my treat pouch, they know that we are not working for food. They know that we're just being normal horses that have to come in and get their grain or whatever that is. So that's another thing. If you use a really specific set of tools and under a specific context so they know we're clicker training now, um, that is something that's going to be to help your horse figure out when it's work for food time and when it's not. Because I know a lot of lesson programs aren't gonna have the time to completely switch all the way to positive reinforcement. So I'm gonna show you a few things that I think would be really helpful for your lesson program to incorporate. These are things that can all be done on the ground, so it's great if you ever have to have a barn lesson, um, or even if you, know, you have a couple horses that are 
having some time off or a little lame or something, these are some things that can be done to keep their brains active. And it's a really good enrichment activity for the horses too, especially if you have anyone on small rest. Now that you've learned a little bit about what positive reinforcement is, um, this is Finnick, and we're gonna show you how the first activity that I usually like to do with it. He has been doing this for a while. He's also kind of young, and we haven't focused a ton on behavior stuff. Um, so he might be a little ill-behaved, but we're gonna do our best. Um, when I first introduced the bridge signal and the food rewards, I always, I almost always introduce it with a target. So a target can be anything. This is a dressage whip with a pool noodle on the end. And so I'm gonna hold it out. Most horses are going to investigate that with their nose and try and touch it. And that's when I do my bridge signal, which is the click, and then I give the food reward. So, uh, notice how I reach my arm all the way out away from my body. I'm not feeding him straight from my treat bag. I try to be really consistent in that because I want to teach the horses that I'm not the food um, vending machine. They only get it after the click and they don't come to me for it. I'm sorry, I was holding my target close to me. They might not be this eager. It takes them a couple tries to figure out the length between touching this and getting the click and then the food reward. But once they figure it out, they're usually pretty keen to touch the target. And from there, I usually go to following the target. So you can use this in like a liberty leading scenario. You can use it to do carrot stretches, which is one of my favorite applications. And you can use, sorry baby. Um, a target to teach all different kinds of things and you can also teach them to target different body parts to your little target stick um, and I'm gonna show you a different application for a target here in a second so here I'm using a what's called a stationary target because I'm not going to be moving this target around I have a piece of a pool noodle tied to the wall and basically I'm clicking every time he touches it with his nose so I'm gonna wait and ignore him while he tries to figure out what gets him the food. And then I'm gonna mark and reinforce when he does it. Now this is not something I've done a lot with him because I don't typically tie my horses very often. But if you have a large lesson program and have horses in cross ties or even tied in a stall, or in a spot where you want them to be stationed, this can be a really helpful tool. Even if they're still tied, it makes the horses feel like they know where they need to go and where they need to stand, and it reinforces them for being in that position in it. The target's the answer. And so I'm ignoring everything he's doing that's not touching the target, and Eventually, I can build a little duration. I'm not gonna have to click every time he touches the target. I might watch him and count one, two, three, and then click. And then we can increase that number um, over time. And then eventually you'll get a horse that knows where his station is, walks right up to the stationary target and stands there to be groomed or tapped or have the vet check him or the farrier do their feet or whatever you want it really just depends on how strong the reinforcement history is um, and i'm using i don't know if i mentioned this before but i'm using hay pellets um, he's a little bit of a chunk i'm sorry i missed you um catch it again and so there we go i can't give him like a very high calorie food um but he really he does fine with just the hay pellets and um, they're not so high value that he's trying to bug me to get the food and that's a really important thing also uh, so now if i walk away i can see if he'll touch the target even if i'm gone Good boy. And this is a great 
great way to teach like ground tying or stationing, um, anything like that. And the nice thing about the pool noodle is you can move them, you can tie them to your horse trailer, um, you can really put them anywhere. So you, I'm sure you can see all the different applications why that could be really helpful in your lesson program. So today I'm going to work with wells on stationing on a mat. And what this means is I'm just asking him to stand on a specific spot. I've never worked with him on this before, but we do lots of like stepping on things and touching things. So he's pretty good and pretty curious. And so what I'm doing is I'm just waiting for him to put a foot on this towel. I actually recommend using like a bath mat or a yoga mat because it is less likely to wrinkle. And I'm just going to continue to reward him any time he puts his foot on the towel. And eventually he'll learn that having his feet on the towel is a really great spot to be in. I'm going to kind of encourage him to step over this way with my body language. And he's pawing right now. I'm going to stop reinforcing that pawing that's not a behavior that I, I'm asking for, but I like that he touched it. Put it down. I'm gonna wait for him to put it down. but he is standing on it. So I'm going to mark and reinforce that. And in the beginning, your rate of reinforcement is going to be a lot higher. Once they learn that the mat is a good place to be, you can build the duration so you're not having to constantly click and food and click and food. But this is a great way to station horses if they have like their own spot in the arena or in a barn aisle or something like that. Back up. Back up. Boy. I'm going to move 
move the mat, make it easier for him to get both front feet on, and I'm going to invite him forward again. I'm going to invite him forward again. And mark and reward as long as he's standing still. Make it really rewarding for him to stand. He's a little bit antsy um, and kind of came to me being a little frantic when having to stand still or be in a stall. So this is actually him being really good um, because we've worked on being calm and standing quiet. I haven't specifically addressed the pawing issue, but um, that's something that I can continue to work on and with learning to be calm and interact in a positive way and with me not rewarding that pawing, um, it's gonna get better kind of on its own. Rude. I'm gonna wait for him to turn his head away from me before I reinforce again. Oh, back up. Backing up is another <laughs> behavior that he has learned through positive reinforcement. Back up. And now we kind of have both feet on, so I'm just going to mark and reinforce at a very high rate. It's also important to teach them to get off the mat, as some horses will learn that the mat is a rewarding place to be. So when you end your session, have them step off and reward that too. Back up. Okay. Thank you. And then we'll be done. So Finnick has worked on this behavior in the past, but it's been a really long time. So I don't know where we're gonna get, but it looks like he remembers. his mat behavior. The thing I really love about it is even if you have your horse cross tied, this can be really reinforcing for them to come to their grooming and tacking area. It also allows me to kind of work all the way around him. And if you have a horse that has a tendency to kind of pull back or doesn't like to be cross tied, this can be a really excellent alternative. Now I'm keeping the rate of reinforcement really high right now just because we haven't done this in a while. But now I'm gonna test and see how long he'll stay stationed. So I'm gonna walk back here like I'm about to pick a foot. And now I'm gonna walk to my tack room door if I had to like go get a saddle or a saddle pad. Boy, very good. And now I'm gonna go get a brush to groom him. that I built over time, but it can be really fun for your students to, you know, check off like today we stood for three seconds and then you can kind of see what you can build up to. Can we walk away and count to 10? Can we walk away and count to 20, 15, etc. you can see why this would be a super handy skill to have. You can do this in a stall too. Um, I've even seen it done in an arena. So 
really the possibilities are endless for why it would be helpful to have your horse be able to station at a mat. Hop in there. You were a very good model today. Not sure how you were going to be. I'm going to show you another one of my favorite things to use positive reinforcement for, and this is self-muzzling or self-haltering. So we've already done this quite a bit with the muzzle, but we actually have not worked on it with just the halter. Um, but he has been conditioned to put his muzzle on himself. You can see he's already reaching for it. And I did that by just putting a big treat in the basket of his muzzle and then marking and rewarding once I was able to get it hooked up um, and feeding him further treats through the muzzle. So I'm gonna hold this and I'm gonna mark and reward. I'm gonna hold it back out. So in the beginning, I'm just starting with the very beginning of the behavior. Um, I'm not going ahead and wrestling it on him as a lot of us might have to do if any of your horses have to use grazing muzzles. Um, so I'm really making that reinforcement history very strong in the beginning. And now I'm going to go, I'm going to move on because he's doing really well. And this is a behavior that he already has. if I can get the whole thing on over the fence. Good boy. So not quite. I got it in his eyeball. That probably didn't feel very good. Beginning, you're gonna do a lot more a lot more um, reinforcing and rewarding once you build the behavior up you're not going to have to do as much there we go I don't know that I've ever actually fed him through the muzzle so he's not quite sure how to get his food I'm gonna hook it good boy there he goes now he's getting the idea and then now I'm gonna take it off good boy I also like to reward the removing of things because a lot of times you can get them to come over to the fence for you to take something on or um, put something on or take something off and that can be a really handy skill as well. So now we're going to try this with haltering. I've actually not done this and even though it seems really similar, um, it's a little bit different so let's see how we do. And you can use your target if you have extra hands. You can use that target and kind of put it where you want their nose. Good boy. And you can see how this application would work really well for, um, for haltering and bridling with your students. You can actually teach them to lower their head um, and accept the bridle and a bit a lot more easily by pairing it with something rewarding. And even if you don't use positive reinforcement with all the stuff that you do, just using it for a few little ground work things um, can be really rewarding for your horses, but also your students. The thing that I love about it is that it makes my students look for the positives. And I think that's something that we don't get in the world a lot is instead of for me looking to pick apart something that he's doing that's wrong to fix, I'm looking at what he is doing well and then I'm rewarding that. And I think that's really powerful for the way that our kids see themselves and their horses. Good boy! That was a good one. He really stuck his head down into the halter that time. I'm going to set my target down. Good boy! And then I'm going to mark again when I get it hooked. Good boy! And I'm gonna go to take it off. Sometimes when you pull halters off when they're in the stall, they kind of shoot back because they're trying to pull it off from you. So this is another great way to keep them from doing that and having them do it in a really safe way where they're willing to um, 
take it slow. So now he's like ready for his halter. Here we go. Can you do it? All by yourself, buddy. I missed. That's it. That's close. Let's see if we can get one more. but I like to think of it more as trading fear for curiosity. So I'm gonna teach him to be curious about something and that new things can be rewarding and not necessarily scary. Good boy. By reinforcing him for looking at an object or sniffing or touching. Good boy. We all know that plastic bags can be terrifying. Um, and I've done quite a bit of this work with him, so uh, he's really not afraid of this bag right now, even though I haven't done this specifically with him. But once you teach your horse how to be curious, you actually are teaching resilience and bravery. So even if you haven't trained with that specific object, a lot of times it will transfer over to other things that might seem a little scary. So I'm using my target stick ask him to step closer to the bag. Um, and he's already, he already knows um, to follow the target stick. He's been uh, reinforced for that quite a bit. And I'm going to let him take the time that he needs. If he needs to sniff something or look out the door, that's fine. And then I'm just gonna use the target stick and ask him to touch the bag. There. He got a little startled when the bag made the crinkle noise when I touched it. So let's try that again. I'm gonna try not to touch it. Good boy. Now it's starting to blow a little bit, so that might be a little more scary. Back up. Good boy. So there he touched it with his nose all by himself. Good boy. try to incorporate some of this into your lesson program and need some tips and tricks or have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email is kara at musgraveequestrian.com. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, all at musgraveequestrian.com. And I also have a YouTube video library also under Musgrave Equestrian. So feel free to reach out and thanks for watching this. I hope you guys learned something.